Hi guys, welcome to the morning after. Happy Tuesday. Um, there's a snowstorm outside, so I'm holed up here. And yes, talking about The Bachelor, the big finale, very exciting stuff. Um, I thought this was a pretty good finale. I know there were mixed reviews, but I'll get to that in a bit. First of all, this reminded me a bit of the season premiere um, where Chris Harrison and everyone at every turn was reminding us that this fourth time's a charm, like he's done this before. And I kind of felt that again. It was like, will he end up heartbroken? Like, I have actual quotes that I wrote down with Chris Harrison. Um, he made a few references to Nick's quest for love being desperate. He said he was his desperate search or how he was desperately looking for love. He said, Nick's been down this road with Caitlin and Andy, and we all know how that turned out. This is like, like each commercial break. And then his parents seem concerned, and with good reason. This isn't their first rodeo. <laughs> it's just like, we get it. He's been through this. His heart has been broken. Maybe it'll get, heart, uh, get broken again. Who knows? But it's just like, you know, we were being beaten over the head with it. Um, let's see. But on the whole, I did think this was a satisfying finale. I liked how there was really no comparison between uh, Nick's connection with Vanessa and his connection with Raven. Like, to me, it's been really obvious that he was, he was just more into Vanessa, and they just seemed more on a level playing field, and I like it when there's no comparison, because, first of all, it means that you can predict it better, but also it just, I think that that's how um, an engagement should come out of this show. I don't think it should be a toss-up. I don't think that they should be in love with both women. I think that it should be clear who the winner is, and probably from about halfway through the season, and that's exactly how I felt about this season. So I found this satisfying. Um, I do like Raven a lot. There's nothing not to like about Raven. I've been talking all season how much I like her. I like her sort of dryness. Um, but I do feel like with her relationship with Nick, there was just too much of a power imbalance. Like, I just felt like she was open and willing the entire time, just sort of waiting for him to feel the same way or to say he loves her or to propose and it's like and I know there's so much more to their relationship than that and that doesn't do her or their relationship justice but I just feel like there there's a power imbalance there that was less so with Vanessa no matter what there's going to be a power imbalance when there's a lead and girls are vying for his attention but I just felt like you know when she, when Raven said you know, her, she was like, I want you to know that, you know, there's no hesitation on my end. I'm not, you know, I'm ready to get engaged, blah, blah, blah. And then he's like, and I want you to know that I've never worried about that. <laughs> it's like, okay, so you've never worried about there being hesitation on her end. It's that is already part of being in a relationship is, is you know, is trusting in each other, but also not, ha not having so much power, not having so much control over the other person's dedication to you. I, I think that that is innately unhealthy. So I, yeah, I, I, li I like Raven a lot. I have no issue. I just don't like her for Nick. Um, what else did I write? I'm, when I look to the side, I'm always looking at my notes because I keep notes now. Uh, okay, yeah. The episode really milked Vanessa's doubts over her, over feeling special and about getting engaged. Um, Here's the thing, like, I love this. Like, I know people were like, oh, she, if she has doubts, then, you know, why is she there? Why should she get engaged? Like, she, he shouldn't pick her. I actually think it's the exact opposite. I think her concerns are incredibly valid. And frankly, it made her way more relatable to me than someone who just is blindly like, yes, I'm ready. I found that I really bought that. Um, also... The, the feeling special thing, I talk about this a lot in my flare recap, which is already up. I did that first today. Uh, but I, I have no issue with that. I truly think that is like wanting to be like a, uh, a panda in a room full of brown bears. I think that it's not about thinking you're special. It's about wanting to be with someone who sees you that way. And I feel like that's what Vanessa wanted, and that's what every woman and man should want in a partner. So uh, no issue with that. Also, her doubts about getting engaged, again, made it more realistic. It put them on a level playing field. It was not a power imbalance. That is a good, good thing. Okay, Elaine said, I hope I'm saying that right, Elaine. Do you think the audience didn't like Vanessa? Uh, I mean, I hope not because that's crazy. I really think that, you know, for all the flack the show gets about being sexist, here is a woman 
who's, who's made it to the end and still is like, I don't know if he's the one for me. I don't know if I'm ready to get engaged. She's having just as many, she's having doubts too. She's not just blindly falling in love with him. She is exactly what we've been wanting on this show. And I, I don't know how anyone could have a hard time with that. I'll get to AFR in a second. MD says, how are you? I'm well, thank you. Um, and Elaine says, Vanessa's perfect for him because he needs a strong person. I completely, completely agree. Um, okay, so on to the engagement. So beautiful. Oh my goodness. It's just lovely. They both seem insanely happy. It's really moving and they're just crying and kissing. Oh my god. They're just like, I was just, uh, I was loving it, loving it. Um, okay, so after the final rose. This is what I guess people have some sort of beef with. Um, they felt that... <laughs> that Vanessa and Nick did not seem like sublimely happy enough or that they're the fact that they weren't like grinning ear to, just beaming the entire time meant somehow that they are not a happy couple. I really emphatically do not agree with this at all. Um, I, an ex of mine, and we, we would agree on this, and I think Andy and I are the same way, it's all about expectation management. You know, like, if things are going really well in your life, or you've just got this big job promotion, or you're really happy in a relationship, this is how I would behave. I would be like, oh yeah, it's good. You know, like, who knows? Like, I don't know if it's gonna work out, but you know, I'm really happy right now. That's how I am. You don't want to be like, it's fantastic. This is it. I'm like, you know, it's to the end. Like, I just feel like that is, it's, it's managing expectations for all parties, including yourself. And it's just not gloating and not seeming arrogant or foolish in the long run. I, I think that that's a totally, the way they behaved is really natural. And to me, um, really was very relatable. Um, they struck me as pragmatic and honest. And above all, listen to what they were saying. They were talking about being realists. And they're being just, their eyes are wide open. They're talking about all their issues. And so, okay, so what if a few screenshots, you know, they were looking in other directions or not like grinning the entire time? I actually think that if they were grinning the entire time, it would be evidence that maybe things aren't great because how many times have we seen couples in Bachelor Nation grinning ear to ear talking about how great things are and all over each other and then within months or even weeks or even days, they weren't together anymore. So I think that listen to what they're saying, which was really they love each other, they have challenges, they knew they would have these challenges, they still went into it, they think it's worthwhile. Um, and that is, they're adults, they're not getting ahead of themselves, they're, they said they're in love, it, they're working at it, they're, they're excited to take it step by step because they haven't even, like she said, been in a car at the same time together. They didn't even have each other's numbers when they parted ways after filming. So I chill out, <laughs> they're happy, they seem happy to me. That's my thoughts on it. Obviously everyone's entitled to their opinion, but that's the way I saw it and obviously I'm very passionate about it. <laughs> Anyway, be sure to check out my Flair recap, which is already up online. My Pretty Pandas recap will come up later this week. And thank you so much for tuning in with me here on uh, the morning after. It's been such a joy to sort of do this video thing. Um, I thought I would be like really scared to do it or just a little shy. And you guys have been so uh, wonderful and understanding and accepting and embracing of it. And, and I love how involved you get. I love your comments. I read every single comment always, even if I don't have time to respond. And so I really, really, really appreciate it. So thank you for tuning in. And I look forward to catching up with The Bachelorette with Rachel. Oh my God, I didn't talk about that. That, I mean, that felt like a stunt, but it was still entertaining. Okay, I'm not going to talk anymore. <laughs> Thank you so much for tuning in to The Morning After, and I will see you uh, next season. Bye.